All right, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. This is Brother Azariah from W5, Jersey, Philly. Coming back with another video, giving all honor and glory to the Most High Yahweh, which the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai, which the world calls Jesus Christ. Shalom, Shalom. All right, Lord willing, all you brothers and sisters that's watching this video, you enduring, you staying strong for the Most High, all right? The talents that the Lord has given you, man or woman, you're using your talents to the best of your ability, all right, so that you uh, can make your calling and election sure. All right, so real quick, we're going to open up with the book of 2 Ezra 8 and verse 35. All right, and this this is one of my favorite precepts right here, man. All right, because there's some people, you know, they kind of say, oh, I don't do this, I don't do that. You know, some there's brothers in this thing that act perfect. I'll say that. All right, they act like they damn behind don't stink. All right, they act as if they've never broken the law of the Lord. All right, they don't struggle with things. We all have things we suffer with in this thing. All right, you know, the scripture going to explain it. We're going to read it. It's the book of 2 Ezra, 8 and verse 35. It says, for in truth, this is truth. It's not a lie. It says, for in truth, there is no man among them that be born, but he hath dealt wickedly. And among the faithful, we are the faithful. We came into the truth. We were in fringes now. We're in fringes, a head wrap. Are we proclaiming the name of the Most High? We'll be, we believe in the chariots. We believe that Yahweh Shah is going to come down and destroy our enemies before us. We believe that Yahweh Shah is going to come down and then uh, redeem us, take us out of our captivity, overturn the captivity of the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the faithful. That's all we have in this thing. We don't got money. We don't got the wisdom of this world. We don't got the materialistic things out here, man. All we really have is our faith. All right. So we're the faithful. But what did he say? He said, and among the faithful, there is none which hath not done amiss. Meaning there is nobody in this truth that has never sinned a day in their life, man. If a brother come up to you, he come in and... Brother, you know, I never sinned before. I ain't break the law. Oh, no. Why would I do that? I ain't never did that. That brother's a damn lie, man. Or that sister. Every brother and sister, you have broken the law of the Most High at one point in your life, man. All right? You know? Nobody's damn... Nobody's perfectly clean in this thing. All right? Nobody's nobody's uh, fully white. All right? Brothers have sinned. Brothers have broken the law. He told you again, I'm gonna read, let me read this one more time, man. He said again, it says, and among the faithful, meaning those that believe in the Lord, it says, among the faithful, there is none which had not done amiss. So everybody has sinned in this thing. Not because all oh, we want to, all right. I I felt like breaking the law, Ak. All right, the brother kind of asked you, brother, why you do that? And he said, Ha, I felt like it. I I wanted to. No, a sincere brother, that's not what he's going to say. He's not going to spew them, that's that folly out of his damn mouth, all right? The brother going to tell you, no, well, I tried to abstain from this. I tried to stop doing that. A righteous brother and sister, they're trying to abstain from things. But sometimes you slip. Sometimes you make a mistake. You break the law at times. Why? Because the Most High has set this thing up from the beginning. Let me read this in 2 Ezra 4 and 30. All right, this is the book of 2 Ezra 4 and verse 30. It says, For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning, and how much ungodliness had it brought up unto this time, and how much shall it yet bring forth unto the time of threshing come. The time of threshing is the day of the Lord. All right, the day when Yahweh Shai comes down with his thousands and thousands, time 10,000, time 10,000, time 10,000 of his damn angels, man. And he comes to wreak havoc on the nations. He coming to destroy Esau, uh, the Elamites, Ishmaelites, so on and so forth. That's the day of threshing. All right. But he told you, he said from the beginning, the grain of evil seed has been sown in Adam. All right. Sin, sin was, sin was bound to happen. All right. As long as you in this flesh, you always going to sin. You going to break the law. All right. This this flesh is like a, a, a shackle. All right. A shackle of iron. All right. It's like you damn got like you got a um, 
Like a handcuff soon, man. All right. Let me get this real quick in the book of Jude. All right. This is the book of Jude 1 and verse 6. All right. This precept kind of been coming out a lot through the spirit. All right. But we're going to bring it out. This is the book of Jude 1 and verse 6. It says in the angels, the angels is talking about man. All right. You go into the etymology. It's speaking about man. It says, in the, and we know we're going to prove it. But it's, I'm going to read it. It says, in the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness, in, uh, sloggy darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. All right? We know this is not talking about the angels because the angels, they fully serve the most high. All right, let's get this real quick. In the book of Psalms 103 and verse 20. All right? So don't let anybody ever tell you that the angels sin because they have not. The angels have not left their, their first estate. All right. This is the book of Psalms 103. And we're going to start at verse 20. All right. Psalms 103 and 20. It says, bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So these angels you read about in Jude 1 and 6 is, is not talking about the actual angels that you have up there in the heaven with the heavenly father. All right, and Yahweh Shah. It's not speaking about those angels. As we just read, the angels, they keep, they, have, they, they keep the commandments of the Lord. So these angels that have not kept their first estate is talking about man. What is that first estate? Man, at, in the beginning, you are made to be perfect. Let's get this real quick in the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 29. All right. This is the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 29. It says, Lo, this only have I found, that Yahweh hath made man upright. So the Most High, he made man upright. Man was supposed to keep the law. Man wasn't supposed to break the commandments. Man wasn't supposed to venture off into different doctrines or philosophies. He, man, he made man upright. Man wasn't supposed to go and sleep with his uh, brother's wife. All right. Man wasn't supposed to be a fornicator. Man wasn't supposed to be a liar, a thief. All right. You know, a tell bearer. Man wasn't supposed to be any of these things. We were made to be upright. We were made to keep the law, to uphold judge, uh, 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 judge, uh, justice. All right. You know, we was made to uphold the judgments of the heavenly father. All right. And decency and order. But what it says, but they have sought out many inventions. So man went about and sought out their own inventions. Man started doing their own thing. All right, man, like he said, man left his first estate, all right, and started doing whatever the hell he felt like. This is the book of uh, 2 Ezra 3 and verse 8, all right? This is the book of 2 Ezra 3 and 8. It says in every one, I'm going to start at verse, I started at 7. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way. Which he transgressed. See that? The Most High, he gave us his uh, law, but what? We transgressed. It says, and immediately thou appointest death in him and his generations, of whom came nations, tribes, people, and kindreds. It says, out of number. And every people walked after their own will. See that? So man walked after their own will. They said, know what? I want to be a homosexual. I'm going to go and do that. Man, I want to be a damn murderer. I'm going to go and kill my brother. I'm going to go kill anybody, whoever I feel like killing, man. All right? Man said, man, I'm, I want to be a thief. I want to be a fornicator. I want to be an idolater. All right? Man left their first estate, their righteousness. Man left their righteousness and went and started getting down with wickedness. It says, and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. See, that's old man went and did their own thing and despised uh, the Most High's commandments. You notice Jake doesn't want to keep the commandments, man. All right. Real quick, when brothers go out there and teach the word and we out there telling Jake they got to keep the law. All right. Eve cover up. Eve didn't look at nigga. What you talking about? Who are you? All we doing is telling you to keep the commandments. But yet they bucking up. They arguing against you. Now, if I was to say, oh, you look good, girl, all right? 
You know, your, your damn stomach showing, your breasts all out. Yeah, you, you look good. You showing everything, all right? I'm not the only man that could kind of see your whole body. Another man could see the same thing, but girl, you look good. If we was to say, if we were to forsake the law and, and tell them uh, uh, things that they wanted to hear, they would have no problem with it. That's what Eve walking uh, around the sh these damn streets uh, with their cleavage all out. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear sweet things. They want to hear you com uh, compliment them. They want to hear you whistle at them. Just like Jake in the world, they used to whistle at Eve to get their attention. Basically, to say they look good. That's what. That's how Jake is now. All right, Jake wants you to tell them what they want to hear. But as soon as you start giving them the law, you start breaking down the scriptures. They, uh, I don't think I really want to do that. Uh, I'm gonna go serve uh, Allah. I'm gonna go and do this. I'm gonna serve this guy. Why? Because with this guy, I have uh, all these different uh, liberties. I can smoke weed if I want to. I can still I can serve Allah and still be a fornicator. I could serve Allah, but still try to take my, my brother's girl. All right? You know? I could still be Mr. Still Your Girl while serving Allah and Shiva. That's what Jake does. They transgress the law of the Lord. They have left their first estate. They have left their righteousness and started getting down with wickedness. All right? So going back to Jude 1 and verse 6, it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved an everlasting chains under darkness unto the, the judgment of the great day. What does he mean he left us in darkness? Meaning he caused us uh, uh, to serve other gods. All right, that's being in darkness. This word is what the, this is the light right here. Yahweh Shai, he told you he's the light. Now there's men, they have been left in darkness. We used to be in darkness. All right, let me get this real quick in First Peter 2 and 9. It's a classic, but we're going to grab it anyway. All right. This is the book of 1 Peter. Just like here. 1 Peter 2 and 9. All right. This is the book of 1 Peter 2 and 9. It says, but ye are, cho ye are a chosen generation. This goes exactly with Exodus 19 and 5 through 6. He's speaking about Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. It says, but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You see that? that's playing upon tables. We were once in darkness, but he called us out of that darkness and brought us into his marvelous light. Now we know the truth. Now we know to keep the commandments. Now I know I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. I no longer say I'm a black man. I no longer say uh, I'm a Hispanic man. I no, no longer call myself a nigger. I no longer sag my pants because I know better. All right. He has brought us out of that darkness into that marvelous light. But nonetheless, hey, we still are under those shackles, man. Even though you have came into this truth, you are still under these shackles that the most High has subjected us to be under. All right. This is this is the shackles right here, man. This damn flesh, this flesh, it weighs you down. It makes you sin. Let me get this in Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 15. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon 9 and verse 15. It says, For the corruptible body presses down the soul. So this corruptible body, it presses down the, uh, the soul. All right? Our soul is who we truly are. All right? Our soul will tell us, you know, hey, you are Israelite. You got to keep the commandments. Our flesh you know, it's going to weigh down the soul and say, no, you're just a black man. You're just a black woman. That's why That's why he said, let me get this real quick, in the book of Galatians. That's why he said the flesh, all right, it lusted against the spirit, man. All right, they are contrary one to another. Let's grab this. This is the book of Galatians 5 and verse 17. It says, for the flesh lusted against the spirit. In the spirit against the flesh. So they're fighting one against another. The flesh is tugging the spirit. And the spirit is tugging the flesh. They're fighting one another. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. You want to keep the commandments. But what? Your flesh is fighting against your spirit. All right? And it's caused you to do those things that you really don't want to do. That's why he said, let me grab this again. Let me go back to it. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 15. He said, um, 
told you plenty upon tables. The flesh is is uh weighing down this this damn soul, man. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon 9 and 15. It says, For the corruptible body, this is the corruptible body. It causes you to do those do those things that are not pleasing in the sight of the most high. Neither is it ple it shouldn't be pleasing to you, and it's not pleasing to your spirit. Alright. Continuing on. It says in the earth, the earthy tabernacle, which is this, this is your tabernacle. The earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. That word music means to meditate, think upon many things. So let me read this again. It says, For the corruptible body presses down the soul, and the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that museth upon many things. So this this flesh it also weighs down your mind. Because now you may have been meditating on the law of the Lord. Like you may walk down the street and you see old shawty that you used to know. You're like, damn. Yeah, flesh like, damn, she you know, she look good. Da, 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 da. Now, see that? That's your that's your flesh weighing down even on your mind. And now it's causing you to muse, meaning meditate on many other things. Things that are not profitable. Things that's not gonna get you the kingdom. When you're looking at old Becky and old old uh Bonquisha, let Laquisha, Latisha, Makisha. You're looking at these old women, man. That's not going to get you the kingdom. All right. Those things, that's folly. That's your flesh causing you to muse on many things, man. Now you're thinking about things that's unprofitable. Now you're thinking of, you, now you got a lust demon on you. You went from here, you was walking down the street, you was thinking about the commandments. You was thinking of upholding the law. Now you thinking about old oh, girl. Now you thinking about the things of the world. Now you thinking about smoking weed. Now you thinking about doing this. Now you thinking about that. Now you're thinking about a whole bunch of folly and vanity. Why? Because you're in this flesh, man. This flesh is always going to be contrary to you. Let me get this in Romans 8 and 20. All right, this is the book of Romans 8, and I'm going to start at verse 20. All right, bear with me. This is the book of Romans 8 and 20. It says, for the creature was made subject to vanity. So we were made subject to vanity. All right? We were made to do things that's not really profitable. All right? You know, we may, we may for example, on our spare time, we may like to go and um, play basketball. That's damn vanity. Dribbling a basketball, shooting hoops. All right. In the flesh, we like to do it. All right. We do it for spare time. But to the most high, it's damn vanity. That thing is not going to get you the kingdom. It's not, it's not really, um, it's not super profitable. But you do it. Why? Because you're in the flesh. You still, you still got to, you know, kind of make it in the flesh, man. So you do things that's not really that important. All right. Not to say you don't play basketball basketball not to say you don't go to the mall if you want to go to the mall that's not to say that but these things are all vanity he told you that in ecclesiastes 1 and 14 all right he said i have seen all the things under the sun done under the sun all the works done under the sun power phrasing all is vanity vanity and vexation of spirit all right this is all vanity even us be me being here now this is vanity the most high if he didn't make this happen i wouldn't be here I don't have to be here if the Most High doesn't want me to be here. That's why we are vanity. We are subject unto vanity. It says, not willingly, continuing on in verse 20. All right, I'm going to read it from the top again. This is Romans 8 and 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly. So we didn't want to be subject to vanity. If it was up to me, I'll be in, I'll be in the spiritual body right now. All right. Every time I link up with the Akin, we talk about being in the spiritual body. We talk about being in chariots. All right. So clearly, willingly, we as as uh, uh, brothers in this truth, being among the faithful, we don't want to be in this flesh. We don't want to have to uh, 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 deal with the things of the flesh, but we have to. Why? Because it's all by the most high. You have to deal with it, man. All right. It says not willingly. But by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. Verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption 
into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So we're going to be ultimately we're going to be delivered from this this uh, uh, hellhole, if you want to say, if you want to say that. Verse 22, it says, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So all creation, all men are even even these damn Edomites, man, they hate their lives. Just because you see these Edomites dwelling deliciously and they getting all fat, they eating off the fat of the land. These men, they hate their lives. They hate their souls. Why? Because they kind of go out there in the sun. They burn in the sun. They're out there groaning, man. When they out there at the beach, man, they groaning. Damn, why does the why does the sun hate me? Why does the sun always burn me? Especially in them Israelis out there in our damn land. They got the second highest rate of, uh, of uh, skin cancer out there. They're out there groaning. How much more us in this truth? We know who we are. We know that we're kings, priests, uh, generals, governors, princesses, uh, queens. All right. We know who we are on the earth, but we're subject to this to this damn body that's full of vanity, man. We're groaning and travailing, like it says, in pain together until now. Because right now you can get shot. You get shot. You you gonna feel the bullet. You're not Superman right now. Superman get hit with a bullet and it doesn't do nothing to him. It doesn't do much for him or to him. So lucky. Us, we get hit with a bullet. All right, you know, somebody shank us. You get punched, spit on, smacked. You feel all these things. All right, you know. So we're in pain together until now. Why? Because we're suffering the things of the flesh. Verse 23. It says, and not only they, but ourselves also. You see that? So he's telling you, Paul's telling you playing upon tables, man. For example, like, it's like you. For example, you brothers and sisters that watch us, all right? You may look at us and say, wow, well, you know, I don't think that brother's sin. There's some brothers that think like that. Oh, I don't think that brother's sin or that brother's righteous. Brother and sister, we not righteous, man. We're, we're trying to keep the faith the, the same way you are. We're trying to keep the commandments the same way you are. All right, but the Most High has given us a platform so that we may teach y'all. Paul is addressing you people right now. He said, and not only they, not only the other people, not only y'all, y'all sin, y'all break the law. Y'all don't fully keep the commandments of the Most High. All right, you do things that you don't want to do. He says, not they only, which is you guys, but also, but ourselves also. So even us that's preaching this word. We also uh, do do those things with, which we don't want to do, which have the first fruits of the spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. See that? So we're waiting to be saved out of this body, this body that's full of sin. All right. Like he said in Romans 7, hey, we're damn, we call, we think of ourselves as wretched. All right. Why? Because we do those things that's not pleasing in the sight of the most high. You hate breaking the law of the Most High. You hate making you hate making uh, um the Most High angry at you, cause you understand when when you sin, you know the Lord's angry. You hate making the Lord angry. That's why we're like, damn, why the hell I do that? You may do something. You may break a certain commandment. You said to yourself today, you know, you woke up and you promised yourself, all right, brother, I, I know I struggle with this. I'm not gonna do this today. Then you damn end up going off and doing it, man. Now you groaning. You getting mad. You might damn wrench your damn uh, mitry. You might wrench your chain, wrench your shirt open, throw ashes and smother it on your head, man. You groaning in this flesh, and you, in this flesh to lock you, and, and you acknowledging that you're a damn wretched man. All right? Let me get this in the book of Romans 7. I'm going to start at 20. It says, now, if I do that, it says, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it. So he told you, for example, being a fornicator, none of us should want to do that. He says, now, if I were to be a fornicator, now, if I did a, a fornicate, it says, I do that I would not, meaning I'm doing that which I don't want to do. I don't want to be a fornicator, but I may end up doing that. It says, continuing on. It is no more I that do it. So it's not me doing it. Like we read in Romans 8, he says, 
uh, we don't do this thing willingly. We're not subject unto this body willingly. We're not subject unto these sins willingly. We don't want to be under these yokes of iron. We don't want to be uh, held captive by these demons. All right. It says, but sin that dwelleth in me. That's what he was speaking of in 2nd Ezra 4 and 30. All right. That sin, that grain of evil seed being planted in you. You're no longer doing it of you. You're not breaking these commandments of your own free will. You're not doing it purposely. But we, as man, we have that grain of evil seed planted in us. So we ended up, we end up doing those things which are not convenient. Continuing on, verse 21. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. So you may go out there, do the work. You give an alms. Are you breaking down the scriptures to a brother or a sister? All right. You know, you, you keeping the commandments. It says again, evil is present with me. Because, you know, Satan don't want to see you doing good. All right. It's like you. Go look at Job. Job was prospering. And you see how Satan was whispering in the most high ear, you know, skin for skin, teeth for teeth. Ain't all that a man had. Will he sell for his soul? Da, 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 da. Power phrasing. Hey, Satan, he was kind of talking to the Most High, man. Why? Because Satan, he doesn't want you to prosper. It's like you. Satan, he doesn't want you to prosper. He's always around trying to sift you out. All right, how wish I told Peter that? Let me get this in the book of Luke 22, and I believe it's verse 31. All right, this is the book of Luke 22 and verse 31. It says, and the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. See that? And Peter, he was doing the work of the Lord. He was doing good. But still, evil was present. Satan was still trying to get on him. Satan was trying to pervert his mind. Satan was trying to break him down and cause him, cause him to do that, which is not uh, commonly, man. So even when you're doing good, you may have thought you did good today. You know, say Esau says, all right, it's not Esau, but... um. You have 24 hours in the day. Now, 17 hours, 18 hours of the day, you like, eh, you know, I kind of avoided the things that I was trying to avoid. You hit the 20th hour, that very same thing that you was trying to avoid, it comes back your way, man. That's Satan coming around and he's desiring to sift you out as wheat. He wants you to sin. He doesn't, you're not going to, you're not going to get away from Satan. Satan's always going to be here. Satan don't clock out. There's no clock out damn uh, time for Satan, man. Satan is not doing a, a 10 to 11 shift. All right. Satan isn't doing a 9 to 5. Satan isn't doing a damn a 6 to 3. Satan, he's always on the clock. So evil is always going to be present with you. Like he said in Romans 7. We'll go back to this. This is Romans 7 in verse, um, what was that? 21. It says, I find then a law. That when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of Yahweh after the inward man. So we delight in the law of the Most High. We want to keep the law. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. See that? So there's a, another law in your mind that's bringing you into captivity, which is the law of sin. You're subject unto sin. You're subject unto this flesh. You're always going to end up breaking the law. You're always going to end up going off. All right? No man can escape a, 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 a sin. You can't escape it. All right? Playing upon tables, there's no man that has not sinned, man. So when you do end up sinning, which you will, now you sin, you may break this commandment. You didn't want to break that commandment. All right? But after that, you don't shun yourself. Woe is me. Let me just fall out the damn truth. Let me just go back into the world. I don't think this is for me. You don't do that. What do you got to do? You got to get the hell back up. You got to show uh, perser perseverance, man. Let me get this real quick in the classic. This is the book of Proverbs 24 and 16. So like I say, although you may do that, what you, 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 you do that, you do the things that you don't want to do. But even when you end up doing that thing, you still have to get up and stay strong for the Heavenly Father and for yourself. Like you say, you got to seek out your own salvation. How you going to gain salvation 
if you can you when you fall and you break the law and you do those sins that you don't want to do, you just allow the demons to attack you. That's like in these damn um zombie movies or shows like um The Walking Dead. All right. A zombie might kind of bite them. They wound it, but then they shrugging them off, shooting them. All right, and they and then they continue on and go on their way. Don't be their brother. You get bit by a zombie, you like, what was me? You know, I got bit. That's it. And you just let the demons, the, not the demons, the damn uh, uh zombies bite you up all up in your face. They renting your face all open, eating your eyeballs. They damn tearing you the hell up, man. Don't let your demons tear you up like that. Don't let your sins weigh you down in that way. Don't let this flesh get to your mind, man. When you fall, you got to get back up. You got to be a man of the most high. You got to be a, a strong woman of the Heavenly Father. This is the book of Proverbs 24, verse 16. And it says, For a just man falleth seven times. The seven is not literal. It's just a perfect amount of time. So even a just man, a man that's keeping the law of the Lord, he's going to fall seven times. Adam fell. Noah fell. Abraham fell. Jacob fell. Isaac fell. All right. Jeremiah fell, Isaiah, Ezekiel, all right, um, Hezekiah, all right, these men have fell, but they got back up, you think when they fell, they just, they sat in the dust, all right, you know, they didn't do that, they got up, they, they, uh, uh they girded their damn loins up, and they, they went harder in this thing, they stayed strong, they had perseverance, like I mentioned earlier, let me read this again, it says, for a just man falleth seven times, so a just man is going to fall, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So a wicked man, when he falls, he's going to just stay in the dirt, meaning he's going to go into mischief. There's a lot of men, for example, there's brothers that got a weed demon on you. Sisters, you may have a weed demon on you. There's sisters that had the weed, weed demon on them, and they just keep smoking. One blunt, three, and then one blunt goes from one blunt to three blunts. Then the three blunts go to damn seven. Then seven go to twenty, and they just continue to go on and on and on. They when they smoked that first blunt, they fell. That was that was them falling. Now what they should have done was got the hell back up. What do you? What does it mean to get up? You damn throw the blunt away. You throw the blunt away and you go harder for the Lord. But that, that person that smoked that one blunt, and then they just kept going up and up and up. They went from three to seven, seven to 10, 10 to 20. That man, hey, that man or woman has fell into uh, uh, mischief. Don't let that be you. You have to be the brother that fall. You may fall seven times. You may run. You, this is a race. You may run in this race. You trip and you fall on the damn stone. Now, you may have broken your leg, your left leg. All right, that may be your dominant leg. You broke your leg. You know what? What you got to do? You got to go home and you got to nurse that leg. You got to heal that leg and, and keep on going. Keep pushing. All right, don't sink in and then, and then fall out of this thing, man. You damn broke your leg and you acting like you damn lost your life. You still can breathe. You still can talk. You still got the spirit in you. You haven't yielded up the ghost. So you still have a chance in this thing. You got to keep going. Keep pushing. Let me get this in the book of Job. This is Job 22 and 29. All right. I'm going to get a few more and close out. It's the book of Job 22 and verse 29. It's lucky. This is Job 22 and 29. It says, when men are cast down, meaning you've been brought down in your sins. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up. It doesn't say, oh, there's putting down. You know, he fell down. All right, let's just put him on the shelf. Let's just, man, just throw that brother in the world. Let him go back in the world. He said, no, thou shalt say there is lifting up. Meaning, get the hell up, man. All right? It says, and he shall save the humble person. So you got to get the hell up. When you fall, you get up. Why? Because the most high, he got you. It's the book of Psalms 37, all right, in verse 24. Psalms 37 and 24, 
It says, though he fall, meaning a righteous man. I'm going to start at verse 23. It says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. All right. And he delighteth in his way. So the just man's steps, they're ordered by the Lord. So like we read in Proverbs 24 and 16, all right, a just man, he falleth seven times. The Lord, he ordered all that. He caused that to happen. All right. And he said he delighteth in his way. So a just man, even though he falls, the most high, he still delights in his way. So he's going to uphold him. He's going to preserve that man to the end. Even though he fell, he tripped, he got a few a few bru uh, bruises, the Lord's still going to preserve this man for the end. Verse 24, Psalms 20, uh, 37 and 24 says, though he fall, he, he may have, he broke the law. He tripped, he fell, he sprained his ankle. If you got ears to hear, though he fell, though he fall, Salakia, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So the most high, he upholdeth that man with his hand. A man that falls, hey, the Lord, he still got it, man. That brother, he got to get the hell up, all right? He got to go hard in this thing. You don't just fall and sink in and give up. Woe is me. I don't think I'm going to make it. No, there's still hope in this thing. Let me get this. This may be my last priest. I might close out with this. It's the book of 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8. All right, select it. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 4 and 8. I believe that's what I want. All right, nope. It's 2 Corinthians. It's the book of 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 8. All right, 2 Corinthians 4 and 8. It says, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. So when, in this truth, you're going to be troubled on every side. But yet he still said you're not going to be distressed, meaning you're not going to panic. You have different uh, trials and tribulations. All right, you got an obstacle course, obstacle course in your way. You're still not going to be distressed. You're not going to be scared. You're not going to flee away from it. It says we are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. So although you may fall in this thing, and be cast down, you still are not destroyed. The Most High still has salvation coming your way. All you got to do is have faith. You got to believe in the Heavenly Father. All right? You know? So you brothers and sisters that's in this truth, although you may fall, you, you sin, you do that, which you, you know, you really don't want to do that, meaning the sin, you, you commit certain sins you don't want to commit. Even though you do that, when you do fall, you still got to get back up. And go 10 times harder for the Heavenly Father. So with that, I'm going to give all honor and glory to the Most High Yahweh, which the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai, which the world calls Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom.